Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at XL Noctowl in the Ultra League, in the Open Ultra League here, because I think that it has a more play here. Basically, what happened last time, like two weeks ago, when Noctowl first got the Chernobyl update, I asked for 1000 likes on the video, and if uh, we hit that, I'm gonna push one to XL level. And here we have a 100% XL Noctowl with 2288 CP. Of course, you can still best body it and goes to over 2300, but it will never reach the 2500. This is really a problem. Not really, this thing has still a lot of bulk in this league, which is pretty cool. And it did actually some work here as well. Here, for example, we have him aligned, uh, like now against here, here, but now like against the Reggie Steel, which is fine, because now we have the Swampert still, which can deal with this Reggie Steel. If we can go for an Earthquake, it doesn't KO, but I can just shield once and farm down again. I call this also a Throne, which might have been the better play actually here. But yeah, we just gotta take the energy, like I can do a lot of stuff with my energy anyway. But my opponent has a uh, Trevenant and I already knew at this point this game is over because we have a Noctowl. Noctowl is the hardest counter to Trevenant. And also hard counter to the Giratina, especially if the Giratina would have run the um, Shadow Claw here that runs the Dragon Breath. But yeah, there's nothing my opponent can do anymore because Noctowl is a very, very bulky still, even though it's like not getting to the 2500 CP. It's a very very bulky boy. It was fun to use. Like it's definitely like it's not top tier Pokemon. I wouldn't say, oh wow, build this Pokemon now. It's so good. But it has some play. Like it's not like that's completely bullshit and that you cannot play it whatsoever. And yeah, you might be already knew the team because I basically leaked that team yesterday because I made a first time mistake actually, which is kind of interesting. I never did any mistakes similar to this before, where I did accidentally put the wrong graphic in the background and like on my other video for Dirtagon, this was in the background and yeah, I had to re-upload that. If you haven't seen the video, like it would be cool if you still check that out. Um, what's kind of sad about the fact that I basically messed it up there. If you're a YouTuber and you mess one video up and you put basically... By the way, you saw the Earth, Earth Power catch that was perfect, but you got the defense drop. In this defense drop, gonna destroy me the game. Like, I'm gonna lose because of this defense drop, as you're gonna see soon here. Here's Gravity in the back, and I don't get to the last move. I would have got to the last move 100% without the defense drop from the... Earth power, and this was actually the last thing that I needed to win the game, but I can't win the game now because of that. Which is a very annoying 10% chance to lose this match. But yeah, like if you upload a video and put it uh, private or like offline, and then upload another video, no one gets any notification email because YouTube doesn't want you to spam videos to other people and have like spammed them on the smartphone so basically yeah, you're kind of screwed with that so this video doesn't really got a lot of views either in the night which it usually does get mainly because of uh, me messing up before and youtube doesn't like that so yeah if you haven't checked that video out it would be nice yeah it's basically again tunnel flame showcase tunnel flame is such a good pokemon it's crazy she gonna shield here i think i don't know why my opponent goes for shadow sneak if you're the giratina never go for shadow sneak by the way, always good Dragon Claw. I think it's the same damage basically, but you need less energy. So there was no reason for you to go for the Shadow um, Sneak whatsoever. And my pawn just doesn't want to shield. I don't know. He just doesn't like his shields, I guess. We can go for a Brave Bird. We can actually let this go as well. Because we have a Noctowl showcase, we of course have to go for the Noctowl and see how much Shadow Ball does against the Cresselia here. Of course, super effective and of course a very strong move and uh, let's see how much it's gonna do. It does a solid amount. I think it would be able to two-shot them with the ring attacks in a neutral scenario, but like this, we're actually most likely gonna lose this match up here, <laughs> which is kind of annoying, but I'm gonna shield here and the grass not comes through. We can go for the Shadow Ball. I think I have a move start on the Swampert, don't I? Yeah, and bye bye, Cresselia. I went positive with this team as well. I'm currently like, yesterday I went so positive, like in general. Like, I started at below 2100 rating again because I tanked, as I said, with a 10 TCP team again for four sets, which basically loses you around 300, a little bit more than 300 points if you just go 05 with that team. Uh, which is fine for me, but now I'm like again at 2300 uh, MMR, which is hilarious. Like, it takes me one day again to get back up there. Yeah, I guess um, it's not just algorithm and teams which are important for Go Battle League, maybe also how you play on your own. Even though we had lag yesterday, I still climbed like crazy, and yeah. 
Lepros is a kind of problem for this team. This was also like one of the main reasons why I didn't really want to build like this. But here my opponent just let go and I was like so happy about that. Because I actually should be able to get to the next move here as well. And now he has a Giratina aligned against a Nocturnal. Oh, actually don't go into the Nocturnal, I go into the Swamp Bird. Because I kind of want to get rid of his energy. I can go for an Earthquake anyway. I actually get rid of all his energy, which is nice. But I can finish him off with Nocturnal anyway. I don't think I can KO him with my Swamp Bird anymore. Yeah, but here we have the Noctowl. Noctowl can take any hit. And this should be it. That was definitely a nice rhyme there as well. Before, on the video before someone complained that I talked too much about other topics, so I'm just going to talk about this topic here now. Um, or well, like the gameplay here. We have nine tails against us in the lead. I don't know why. Like, I was very tired yesterday evening, so... Um, I should have stayed in in the beginning. I think like the Swampert matchup is not the worst actually. So me swapping out there was not the smartest idea. But hey, that's what happens. And here you see, I swapped into the Talon Flame. My game just didn't want me to swap into anything and then automatically swapped me into Swampert, which is, if you didn't know what think, always when you have the option between uh, which Pokemon you want to swap in and like the game doesn't let you swap into anything, you get into your actual lead Pokemon first instead of the other Pokemon. Here my opponent just gets an extra quick move and a charge move in. Isn't it nice? And we are basically completely screwed here. Like what do we want to do? We have a half health Town of Flame now. We have the Night Hits coming in. We got screwed by the game like several times here already. Like it... <sighs> It's so annoying, like, Talonflame cannot deal with, like, everything alone. Or oh, can it? I'm a champ. And let's see if we can KO him before he can KO us. And we're gonna be able to win this game, even though Niantic tried to screw us again with some lag. Very, very nice. Good game there. It's just that, like, Talonflame is so good. Like, Talonflame is actually the best Pokemon in Ultra League. I really enjoy using that, and I would highly recommend you using that as well. I think that might be the Talonflame uh, Greed and Scrafty team. I shouldn't have sought out into my, um, what's it called, my Nocturne I think there. I think that was kind of a mistake. But anyway, we can go for a Sky Tech there and we should be fine. It's early morning right now, by the way, if I sound a little bit weird, I basically just woke up from the yesterday evening chat. <laughs> yesterday evening session where I had to make the other video, so I sound maybe a little bit tired, but it's all right. Noctowl gonna win this matchup here, just barely. Like, yeah, Noctowl is not as good in terms of stat product as the uh, Greedent. Greedent is one of the coolest Pokemon as well. I kind of want to build a new Greedent, have a rank 3 or something, or rank 2 even, but I only have my uh, lucky one right now available, so... Kind of annoying there, but in general I have so many Pokemon that don't have optimal IVs because I just want to showcase them immediately when they came out. Same with Trevenant, but for Trevenant I'm actually not that um, like unhappy with that because it's right now my Trevenant is basically a very decent one for the non-XL Ultra League, so if, maybe I'm going to make a Trevenant for the XL Ultra League as well soon. But I don't even know if Trevenant is that good actually in the open one. Maybe you should try that out again. Maybe Trevenant needs a video again as well. Kind of want to make a Regirock to be honest for those leaks. I really think Regirock has a lot of play right now. Here Swampert is just sweeping everything again. Noctowl only after the first game. I mean the first game was like basically a Noctowl sweep there. But other than that Noctowl didn't really come in too good there. But still it was a funny Pokemon to use. I'm not regretting that I used my starters there. I'm thankful, of course, for everybody who supported me on the other video where I asked for it. You can also support me here with a like if you don't have uh, you like this video at any point of time. And yeah, my oh this guy, this guy, oh, this poor guy, he tried to catch the move on the Berserker, and now surrenders. I'm so sorry, but yeah, this is not how it works, sadly. We have Blastoise against us. This is horrible. Blastoise is something where I don't have anything against it whatsoever. So what we're gonna do here is basically shield. Hope that he doesn't shield the Earthquake. But my Earthquake didn't even go through. So we're just gonna spam the Hydro Cannon and see if he doesn't... Like if he wants to keep his Blastoise alive or not. The cool thing about Swarmlet is just that you can spam them so often. And like it doesn't really matter too much for you. Here we get a shield. 
we can shield again, get another shield, put him low enough that we can farm down, maybe even with a Talon Flame. I mean, if he's shield down, like, like, well, no shields with Talon Flame is so scary for the opponent if you have some energy lead already, because it's like Brave Bird just hurts everything like crazy. Like, Brave Bird is just such a good move. So we're just gonna go in here, we're gonna farm him down, let's see what he has in the back. It's a Pidgeot. We're gonna go for a Brave Bird there, we're gonna catch the Gust coming in onto our Noctowl. Swapping out there, and my opponent actually goes for the move, and he actually goes for the Feather Dance, which I thought, okay, that's most likely in this play, but now he goes into the Obstagoon, and I think we're gonna lose this game here, sadly, at the end. Well, this was a super unfortunate game in general. I'm gonna see that now, anyway. Of course, we don't do a lot of damage because we double debuffed, otherwise this Obstagoon would have been already dead, actually, which is hilarious. But um, we can go into our Talon Flame. Night Slash does nothing really. We can survive another one. My opponent catches perfectly here, which I had to throw anyway because the cast would have done too much damage as well. I couldn't have farmed him down. And he survived with 1 HP while I couldn't get to this move and I couldn't get to the next move either. So yeah, very nice. My opponent won this game and while I couldn't get to two moves, uh, there was everything right. Like there was no lag or no bad thing in there, it was just super unfortunate that we couldn't get to our charge move we both had loaded twice because of once I basically got to the charge move as soon as he KO'd me with his last counter and once because my uh, Noctowl of course threw the CMP against Obstacle because Noctowl has basically no attack. So kind of unfortunate. Here against Polytoad we can actually go for one um, Brave Bird, put him low enough that we can farm down with two shields. But we have to two, two shield here, otherwise there's no way we can farm down, sadly. So yeah, at least we are loaded now. I'm gonna swap out, catch the move on the Swarm Bird here. And he actually gets a charm through where I don't even get the mud shot through, which is really cool. That's how the game is supposed to work, of course. Not. And my opponent is crafty in the back. We can go for the Brave Bird here so we don't get as much damage on us. And I was like, okay, we must I gonna lose this match now. Because I definitely need one KO and one sky attack. I definitely need two sky attacks. Grafty is very bulky. And Grafty does a lot of damage with power, punish plus foul play. He has already so much energy. There's no way we can win this, right? Like, yeah, I can go for this nice sky attack now. Put him low enough, but I won't be able to farm down time here. See, he's gonna get to the move. There's no way Nocturne is gonna win this game. Sadly, oh, what is there? Nice, nice Nocturne. Gonna be able to survive this power punch. And we're gonna win this game, of course. If we went for double power punch and then went for foul play, you would have won the game. But that's something that you never know, so what do we say that it's a big misplay on my opponent's part? I don't think anybody knows the counts for a Noctowl, so I guess that's fine. Here that's kinda of problematic with Swamp Swamp as well. My opponent got an extra quick move in in the in my first charge move, so basically what I had to do here is give up the Swamp Pit. There was nothing I really I can do there because I'm always gonna be one turn behind him. And yeah, Noctor just gonna take some hits here. I actually took the hit pretty nicely. We can farm uh, we can like throw the move there. Now we can go into a talent flame against the Obstagoon. Decent matchup for us because we resist the counter, but it's definitely still not the best matchup that we get this move through, which is really nice. I was kind of fearing a Hyper Beam or something like this, so I just shielded up. Can go for another Flame Charge. My opponent let it go, which is really good. And he goes into Time Flame. At this point, this game is over. We are double boosted. My opponent actually gets an extra move through there, but this shouldn't really matter too much, to be honest. We got the Brave Bird through as well, and this is gonna be a good game. Well played there. Next up. We're gonna have Giratina against us and Dragon Breath Giratina, which I don't really like to see. We can just go for one Earthquake and then swap out basically. Earthquake does a lot of damage, puts him into Flame Charge range, which is nice. And now he does, definitely has to swap out. He goes into the Emporion and we have a lag against us, which is always cool when you have something that has like, um, what's it called? Waterfall against the Fire type Pokemon. Always good to have quick move like there, so it's like sped up. It's, it's just amazing. We actually put him pretty low, and I don't know how I play this game actually. I got a shield here, I guess. Yeah, I got a shield and try to get to my charge move. I know that he would have got to his charge move before if I didn't throw there, so I'm fine with that. I can keep my Pokemon. Basically, he has tell him back. I don't think we're gonna win this game. I don't see how we should win this game, so yeah, he goes for a Flame Judge. Ten Flame is just way better than a Knock Tower, of course. Gets to way higher CP, has better stats and moves, so there's not a lot that I can do here. You can just go for a Flame Judge all the way. And 
I don't think there's anything I, I can do. My airport actually places are really cool there. It doesn't really shield this, which is super smart. Like, I actually didn't thought about this. I thought, okay, maybe I have a chance of shield there. But he didn't shield, which was a really nice play for my opponent. Good, well, well played there, like, totally perfect. And he wins this game because of that. Maybe I still had a chance to outspeed him for the Terror Flame otherwise, but like this, well, well, well played by my opponent. Nothing I can say against him. Uh, here, Terror Flame goes for Brave Pudding and Swampert, of course. You always have to shield there. It's it's a little bit tricky, but you can do it. And you're gonna be able to win the matchup in the two shields anyway. So there's nothing that this guy can do. He tries to swap onto his Swampert, but I can just go for my Hydro Cannon. I don't really have to care too much about it. I'm gonna try to catch the move, didn't work out pretty well, but I can still go into my Noctowl. I can tank two Hydro Cannon without a problem. Farm up a little bit extra as well. There should be a decent spot there. Noctowl is actually super bulky, like you see how little the Hydro Cannon does, and he has an Escaf in the back. This should be a good game because we already have the Terran Flame for the Escaf, we had the Swampert still for the other thing in the back, and yeah, we are in a really decent spot. We can just let, it, let this go. Let this go, and yeah. There's nothing really that can happen to me anymore. We shoot the break, but we KO this thing, and that's gonna be a good game. Thanks all for watching, see you in the next video, and bye!